Hi, so in this video we're going to derive the intertemporal budget constraint. To do that we're going to start by defining a model. So this is a two-period model of intertemporal choice where we have consumers who live for two periods. So we have some kind of time aspect, an intertemporal aspect. So our consumers can consume some of their income and then they also have the choice of either saving or borrowing uh, the rest of the income that is not consumed or they can consume more than their income in period one and borrow from period two. And this basically means that they can choose across time how much they wish to consume. And we also have an interest rate R. This means that our consumers can buy a one period bond that pays interest rate R. And this is just their sort of means of borrowing and saving. So now we have these assumptions set up, let's start getting some mathematical expressions down so we can start deriving the intertemporal budget constraint. So here I've written out BC1 for budget constraint in period 1 and BC2 for budget constraint in period 2. So if we think of our previous assumptions, we have income in both periods. So in period 1 we're going to have income, which we'll call Y1, and that income will equal to our consumption in period 1 plus any borrowing or saving that we do, which we'll call B2. Here, B2 is the bond purchases in period one. So this can be negative if we are borrowing and is positive if we are saving. So to understand this, we effectively have, if we have zero borrowing and saving, then this will equal zero and our income in period one will equal our consumption in period one. If we have negative B2, which means that we are borrowing, this means that our consumption will then be greater than y1, so we consume more than we have income in the first period and so on. So that's how we understand that. And in period two, we again have income, but it's now period two income, so we call it y2, plus the borrowing and saving from the period, for the period prior, period one, but we multiply this by one plus r because we have to pay an interest rate on this. So if we borrow in period one, we have to pay that back in period two at an interest rate of r. And if we save in period one, we then have that as extra income to spend in period two and we save and we gain interest r on that. And this expression is equal to consumption in period two. Uh, hopefully you understand the intuition by now. So if we have positive borrowing term, so we have saving, this will increase the amount that we are able to consume in period two. So if B2 is positive, this, this side of the expression will be increased. And so the right hand side of the expression is also increased. If we save in period one, we can increase our consumption in period two. Hopefully that is quite straightforward. So let's take those two previous equations and put them at the top of the screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange this equation such that we isolate B2 on the left hand side. So B2 equals C or Y1 minus C1. And then I'm going to substitute, substitute that into this equation, uh, but not for Y2. I'm going to substitute it into B2. Okay, so what will that do? That gives us Y2 plus Y1 minus C1 in brackets plus R and that all is equal to C2. And now we're going to rearrange this, uh, not in an obvious way, but we can divide through by 1 plus R and then move a couple of terms around from each side such that we can rearrange into this form where we have y1 plus y2 over 1 plus r equals c1 plus c2 over 1 plus r and if I can draw a terrible box around this like so this is our intertemporal budget constraint or IBC, because I'm not going to write out intertemporal budget constraint. But what does what does this say? 
Well, if we look at the left-hand side of the expression, this is our present value of income. So we've got the y terms on this side, y1 and y2, but we have discounted y2 by the interest rate 1 plus r. This, this is what we say is a present value. So y2, so income in the second period, is worth slightly less than the same amount of income in the first period because if we had, say, £10 in the first period, we could save at the interest rate r, and in the second period, we would then have £10 multiplied by the interest rate 1 plus r. And on the right-hand side, we say that this must be equal to the present value of consumption. Again, consumption in period 1 is valued slightly more than in period 2, and this discount factor is the interest rate. So our present value of income must equal our present value of consumption. We consume all of our income because we are not satiated. We, have, we want as much consumption as possible, so we exhaust our budget, but the most consumption we can have is just spending all of our budget. So we have this sort of inequality where consumption must be less than or equal to income and we know that it will be equal to it because we want to just consume as much as we can. So that's the intertemporal budget constraint. So that's that for this video. Do check out the playlist, which should be about here, to check out the future videos in which we'll look at borrowers and savers and changing the interest rate. And do subscribe for future videos and drop a like if this video was at all helpful.